This is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by actress Alexander Shipp, uh, Nick Robinson, another actor, and director Greg Berlanti of Love, Simon. Um, Gonna try and speed through this, so hopefully we don't uh, go too fast, but I wanna start out by talking about what brought you guys to this project. I know, Greg, you've been involved in tons of projects, but you usually don't direct them yourself, so I was curious as to what made you wanna actually direct this yourself, and for you guys as actors, what attracted you to the characters you were playing, and what made you sort of think like, oh, I can put a stamp on this character that's uniquely me? Um, so. Whether it, for me, whether it's show running or directing, I think they're both storytelling. And, and in TV, show running is sort of the, the version of you're in charge of all the decisions that like help people sort of feel a certain thing. You know, you're casting it, you're, you're, you're uh, writing it, you're, you're putting the whole thing together. And, and in film, it's directing. And so this story spoke to me in a way that uh, I was a closeted gay teen and, and I, I wished that I had had a film like this. And then also, I love the tone of it. I love that it wasn't just a comedy. It wasn't just a drama. It was really just felt like it reminded me of a lot of films that I liked growing up that had that same sort of blend of, of things. Uh, and so that kind of, you know, whatever, that alarm went off in me that said, all right, I really want to be a part of this. And then I applied for the, applied for the job. Um, so my story came after that. Greg was the first person who introduced me to Simon. I hadn't read the book before or anything. I, I read the script and we met and we talked for um, some time and I went into audition and um, what got me excited about the project was the, I mean there were a lot of things about it that I found exciting but one of the main things was the um, the mainstreamness of it and that was kind of a a, a very cool idea is to bring this story and, and, and tell it through um, this character's perspective that we haven't seen before. It's a story that seems maybe familiar, but it's from a perspective that we haven't seen. That was one of the things that excited me the most. And one of the things that I thought made it a little subversive too was just the fact that it was trying to be this big, bold, mainstream film. And it's actually has something to say. And it's sort of like, putting your veggies in chocolate or something, <laughs> you know, um, it has a, it, it has, it has a message. And that was one of the things that I thought most strongly about. Was it one of the strengths? Alex? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I, I loved the writing in this script. Um, the mo there are moments where it's like, hey, did you hear that someone's gay? And it's like, who cares? You know, and I love that idea. I think that it doesn't matter. Um, at the same time, kids can't help but gossip, you know? Mm. Adults can't help but gossip. <laughs> Shoot, let me just yeah, throw yeah, us all under yeah. the bus. People love to gossip. Um, but what, what was beautiful about this movie was that it was, it was giving you the chance to see it from someone else's perspective and not have judgment. And the things that you were judging him wasn't for him being gay, but for him lying to his friends. Mm. And that type of integrity is something that I think we could use a lot more in movies. Absolutely. Uh, one of the interesting things to me at least that I noticed when watching this movie is that for a film that is based on a technology essentially, it isn't inherently like overwhelmingly focused on, and this is something that I think about in terms of movies all the time, like what movies plots would have been solved if they had a cell phone, or you know, you look at a film like this, it could have easily been like, oh, this is Snapchat based, or Instagram, or some sort of very time specific technology like a pager. Um, how challenging was it to try and make this a timeless story while at the same time being built upon a technology? And did you guys have any sort of impact of being like, this doesn't feel authentic to kids or, you know, like was that any sort of thing that you guys sort of brought back? Well, they were definitely closer to their childhood than I am in that way. So they, I, I'm relying on people. I just think, I, you know, we, we did a lot of just technological tests about like you know, how we're going to shoot the footage in terms of the, the sort of correspondence and the emails happening back and forth. But for me, it, it really, the, one of the wonderful qualities of the book and the script and what we wanted to achieve with the film itself was it, it, it does have a timelessness, I think, in that it, 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 it harkens back to almost a simpler time in terms of like the level of correspondence, but there's enough newness and newfangledness of, of the technology that's happening that you get a sense of it. But it, the story and what's happening is, is an age old sort of tale, you know, it's, yeah. it's you know, it's two people falling in love, uh, at, at the, at the heart of it. Um, so, so we, we tried to have the sort of 
proper amount of, of technology and, and things represented, but never having them overwhelm the story or the emotion. And, and if the characters and the, I think the, the acting kind of comes first, um, it, it sort of a lot of times you'll see we're just framing even the love letters back and forth even extra wide so that it, it just feels like portraiture more than it feels like it's the small, about the smallness of a device or something. Interesting. And did you guys have any sort of thoughts as you're going through this in terms of like the authenticity or sort of trying to share your thoughts and make it feel more actual what kids these days when I say right. that? As somebody think... who totally related to Tony Hale, would be more than, <laughs> more than I would have liked. <laughs> I love that. I mean, honestly, Greg knows what he's doing on that on that front. There was never a moment, at least not for me, where I was like, this doesn't feel very true to to teens because he's he's got all of his shows on the CW and that's they're they're right at the forefront when it comes yeah. to that stuff. So I, I feel like he knew what he was doing when it came to that stuff. There was never a time for me where I was like, oh, she wouldn't hold her phone like that because majority of the time I'm probably holding my phone upside down. Hmm. So. I respect that. Yeah, I think uh, the script as well had a very fresh feel. It was young writers, and they did a great job of, I think, walking a fine line between like encapsulating everything that comes with high school in 2018, and then also trying to stay true to some of like the classic influences, John Hughes films, and the timelessness quality. Um, yeah, I mean, if anything, I feel like the emails back and forth. Um, almost feel kind of quaint in a way. It's sort of oh. like an old fashioned love story where you'd write love letters back and forth <laughs> or something. Yeah. You've got you know, mail, yeah. <laughs> Parallels. Um, so there, uh, yeah, there's, there's levels to it. It's not all just sort of one tone. It's a great thing about the movie too. Um, one of the other things that occurred to me was that there's a fandom for the book that this was originally based on. Since all of you sort of have experiences dealing with hardcore <laughs> fan properties, um, did that influence the way you guys approached this project at all or the way you interacted with the fans at all or any sort of thing surrounding it? Because, you know, if you mess it up, the people who love the book are going to let you hear about it. Right. I think that uh, I've gotten used to that a little bit in playing uh, an X-Men character is that uh, you have to rise to the occasion. In moments where people have an idea in your mind, you say, that's fantastic. I'm so happy that you have envisioned this and you are so close to it that you can see it. But I'm going to find the confidence inside of myself to give you what I think is the best Abby as I, as I possibly can and, and to kind of allow people to have their opinions but not allow that to affect me in my character building. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think you try and um, be uh, aware, obviously, of the character and the fans that came before this and respect that uh, and take that into consideration. But then when you're actually doing it, you kind of have to just let it go. Um, but I think that the, the film and the script does a great job and does uh, justice to the book. Um, I feel like they were very um, sort of cognizant of the story. And I think Becky's book sort of is a great template. She used to be a school psychologist and her insights, I think, in the in the novel um, really come through in the script and uh, yeah I, I I feel like we I feel like we did it justice yeah my thing is always just be true to the essence of the thing and and then you still have to make it for a new art form so uh, and and if you surround yourself with other people that respect it too and Becky was there actually the author was on set a lot and there were things sometimes that we had come up with that weren't in the book, that weren't in the script, whatever, and she would say, oh, I, I had something just like this and I cut it out of the book, or oh my god, I thought this was exactly how I pictured this thing, and it's never described that way in the book, but it just it's sort of, so it should, you start to have sense of your mind melding. Uh, okay, so we got one last question. I just was curious, if you could have people get one sentiment or idea or thought or whatever when they come out of this movie, what would the thing you would like people to walk away from the story pondering? Alex? I think that the, uh, the one thing that I'd like for people to take away from this is that um, it doesn't matter who you're attracted to. It matters how you treat the people around you. And so even though Simon is homosexual, he is looked at 
by his friends in a different way because he lied to them, not so much about his sexuality, but about all of the other stuff that goes on the, in the movie. And uh, his sexuality wasn't a problem for them. It was the fact that he lied to them. And so I think that if anyone can take something away from that, it's that no one cares who you're sleeping with. I care what you say to my face. I care that you're speaking the truth. Nice. Yeah, I hope, I hope that that's great. I hope that people feel included and um, <clears throat> represented and that, you know, this film is a familiar story, I think. It's sort of tried and true territory, high school, coming of age, but it's told from a perspective that we haven't seen before. So I hope people can um, sort of think about and appreciate that uh, and hopefully, you know, gain some insight, whatever it is, into their own lives or someone else's. Very cool. And my, my favorite movies are the ones that make us feel something, anything, you know. Uh, and, and I think a lot of times these days there's films that sort of, you know, you can see the budget in them, but, you know, and, and or they can maybe, there are other ones that may make you think, but the ones that live with me the longest are the ones that make you feel. And you almost remember them like a person, you know, and, and you fall in love with the characters the way that you fall in love with people. And um, so that's, that's my hope is that people will connect with it that way. Very cool. Alexandra, Nick, Greg, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. I wish you the best of luck. Uh, everyone go see Love, Simon, be included. Um, and uh, check out McGuffin.in. McGuffin.in. And uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you.